everyone welcome back to my channel this is Lucy and today's video is gonna be a little bit different so my husband and I just moved to a new place and prior to this we were actually sharing an apartment with a roommate of ours and so we didn't have the 100% pure creative license and freedom to design our previous place the way that we wanted to because there was another person who was sharing the space and also needed to use the space in their own way but now we finally have a place just to ourselves so we were super excited to put all of our own little touches all over this apartment however we were working with a very low budget so we ended up doing a lot of DIYs to make the place look and feel like ours but not having to spend a bajillion dollars to do it so I thought that it might be kind of fun to share that with you guys. I think some of the things we did were a little um, unique or maybe not things that everybody would think of. So I just thought it might be fun to kind of give you a little tour of some of the DIYs that we implemented in our place, just in case it might inspire other people to do the same or similar uh, DIYs. So the very first DIY that I wanted to share with you guys is this chalkboard that I actually made out of the welcome sign that we got from our realtor when we bought this place. And we thought that the sign was cute, but we didn't really have a use for it. It just said welcome on it. So what I did was coat it with some all-purpose primer. And then I just went to the hardware store and bought some chalkboard paint, not chalk paint, but chalkboard paint and I gave it about three coats. And that's pretty much it. We really liked the um, the rustic kind of border that it has because we, we kind of like that rustic decor look. And so we just thought it would fit really well with our place and it worked out pretty perfectly, I would say. So the second piece of DIY decor I wanted to show you is this hanging item. Uh, made out of some driftwood that I found. We live on the shore of Lake Okanagan, which is a really big lake, and there's always tons of this really beautiful kind of warped driftwood lying around. So I have a pretty big stash of it in my studio. And I made this piece of art just by drilling some holes into the pieces using a Dremel drill tool and then I just threaded some recycled copper electrical wire through the holes to connect the pieces together and um, for the decorative elements I just kind of wound the wire in on itself to create a swirl kind of pattern uh, but you can do anything that you want like you can make this as simple or as complicated as you like and we actually have another one that's kind of similar but slightly smaller hanging up in the studio. Uh, as you can see, this one just has the connecting wires and not much else. I also suspended just some recycled beads um, and actually a piece of fishing, copper fishing tackle from the very bottom. And I think it just adds this kind of really beautiful natural vibe and shape to a space and it cost me literally nothing just a couple of hours of time to make it if you need any tutorials on wire wrapping or wire work there's tons of videos on youtube on how to do that but pretty much all you need is just some pliers and a little bit of patience so now we are coming up to the front door and as you can see we have these this nifty little key holder slash a bag holder slash mini shelf by the door and if you remember that picture from before that had the welcome sign it also has you can't see it very well but a champagne bottle with a champagne glass holder attached to it so this little shelfy thing is actually that champagne glass holder that we just repurposed by attaching some hooks to it um, and then there's also a little decorative sign that says Guatemala because my husband is from Guatemala so we just wanted to add a little personal touch to it but essentially all we did was uh, pierce it with some screws and attach it to the wall at the thinnest part so the screws are in the middle of those cup holder indentations and they just screw right into the wall with some anchors 
and this thing works perfectly for not forgetting our keys or wallets. It's just right by the door, super convenient, uh, kind of a wacky, weird idea, but those little cup holder things actually work perfectly to hang bags off of, so if we don't wanna forget something before we're out the door, this is the perfect solution. So obviously not everybody would have this specific contraption, but if you have any kind of leftover piece of wood, then you can totally use that to create a really awesome shelf. You can even use additional tools to make it um, fit the shape that you're looking for. But my point is that if you think a little bit outside the box, you can come up with some pretty cool stuff. So now moving over to the plant section of the house, what I wanted to share with you guys about this is that we paid next to nothing for all of these plants because we actually just propagated our own. And that is because my parents have a few plants at their house which are really easy to propagate. So all of the plants that you see here are pretty much just cuttings or propagations of existing plants. So these two, for example, are spider plants, which every season they shoot off these little babies that you can literally just snip off with scissors, plop in some water for a few weeks, and then plant in a separate planter pot. This vining one uh, with the smaller leaves is called pothos, and the vine with the bigger leaves is, I believe, some kind of a monstera plant, which we have cut back probably, I don't know, 10 times since we've had it, and it just keeps growing back. And as long as you cut a little section that has a root piece coming off of it, then you can just keep it in the water and it will take root and grow a whole new plant. And usually once the roots are about a few inches long, I feel comfortable to plant it in a separate pot and just keep an eye on it and usually it's totally fine to grow a whole new plant. As you can see, I've got a little pothos propagating right now in a glass jar on my desk. So while we're over in this section of the room, I just want to show you some natural decor that we've brought into the space, literally from outside. So right now here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's winter time and there's a lot of beautiful dried plants. And so what I did is I went for a big walk with my friend and her dog and I just picked up a whole bunch of different dried branches and grasses and I picked out the nicest ones to include as part of our home decor. So this is literally just some dried grass that I placed in a glass beaker that I thought looked kind of cool that we got from our friend but obviously you could put these in any kind of glass jar. So moving over now to the dining area, I've actually uh, pinned up some dried branches from that same walk that I took. And what I did is I just bound them together at the base using some natural cotton twine. And then I just, just used some clear thumbtacks to secure the twine and the back parts of the branches to the actual wall. And I just think this looks really beautiful and calming and it's a piece of decor that can be switched out as often as you want so it's kind of like a dynamic piece of natural decor which I really like. I also thought that it added a bit of dimension to the mirror that we have behind the dining table because we just included this mirror in our space to add a bit more light reflection but we realized it wasn't really reflecting anything other than the white wall. So now with the branches hanging there, it kind of looks like there are branches beyond the mirror as well. So it just adds a bit more dimension to the space. So now moving on to the central part of the living room, you might have noticed that we have this giant weird painting hanging on the wall. And so this is a painting that I actually did. Uh, it features some characters that I invented called the Glarfuls. And I mean, I'm a pretty weird person, so I don't mind having big weird art in my house. And if you think about a canvas this size, which I think is 40 by 60 inches, done by a professional artist, you would probably be paying in the thousands of dollars for something that you like. Whereas I paid maybe $150 in terms of materials and then just a few hours of my time. And even if you're not an artist or if you don't do art normally, there's tons of tutorials that I found on YouTube that guide you through selecting 
uh, colors that work well with your space and painting some really simple abstract artwork. It's really not that difficult. Once you get the hang of basic shapes and basic brush strokes, you can just follow a tutorial and create something super beautiful in not very much time. So now moving down to our coffee table area, I did a DIY on this little wooden coffee table that I bought at a secondhand store. And all I did was paint it white, and then on the top of it, I used a technique called acrylic pouring, where you mix acrylic paints with a pouring medium that makes them more liquidy. And there's literally a bajillion tutorials on YouTube about how to do this, which is how I learned how to do it. And guess what? I did a terrible job. This is not how it's supposed to look at all. It's supposed to have these really cool circular cells form within the paint and it actually did have that but then I think my paint consistency was incorrect so it all kind of flowed off and the shapes got pretty distorted but my husband said that he liked it so we ended up keeping it and then all we did to make the table usable was to coat it with three or four coats of a clear varnish that you can buy at the hardware store. So this is actually my second attempt at doing an acrylic pouring piece on a coffee table and I think it turned out a lot better. I really like the shape of the cells, I think the paint consistency was much better, uh, but actually we ended up deciding that it was a little bit too busy to keep around the couch area. So I actually just used this upstairs in the bedroom as my little bedside table and it works perfectly well as that. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me for my little house tour of DIYs. I hope that you enjoyed it. That being said, we are nowhere near done decorating our space. We've done a lot of the living room kind of kitchen area, but we have our bedroom and our spare room still to do. So if you guys have any other cool, unique DIYs, tips and tricks, please pop them in the comments below because I would love to hear them. Again, if you did like it, please give this video a like and feel free to subscribe to my channel as I will be uploading videos much more frequently now. I do a lot of permaculture and sustainability related content, but I also do just random videos about my opinions and different stories from my life, DIYs, tips, tricks, just like general stuff that I find interesting is what I pop onto my YouTube channel. So if you like a little bit of everything, you might want to subscribe. And if you do, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much and take care. Bye.